if I was starting off again, learning how to day trade, and this is square one, day one, and we go all the way back to the beginning here, this would probably be the strategy that I would use. Um, and even if, you know, with all the other moving parts, because obviously there's a lot of other factors that come into trading when you start getting into the psychology and the mindset and the emotional side of things, and obviously, you know, learning how to scale in at scale in and out of trades and where to take profits and, you know, all of that stuff. There's a lot more complexity to it, but if today is day one and I'm going to learn how to day trade, first things first, what I would do is definitely not risk my own capital. Um, I would, I would go sign up, you know, pay whatever the amount is for any one of these given futures prop firms out there. Um, some of the ones that I work with top step, Apex and Surge Trader, right? You what? Take your pick. They're all basically the same. Um, so that way, it allows you to get a little bit of skin in the game. Okay, it allows you to go through, you know, kind of a a trading kind of simulator, right? Basically, understanding yourself, working on your craft, working on your entries, working on your exits. Uh, without losing a ton of money, right? So a lot of times, newer traders when they come into the market they'll get strictly into either live funds where, you know, they really don't have any rules. They don't have a system. They don't have a trading plan. They don't have a mentor or a coach or a community of people to ask. Um, so they're kind of bouncing around, you know, between different ideas and different chart patterns and different setups. And what that really creates is a lot of inconsistency, right? So in trading, right, if you're going to be a consistent trader, then that's what you need to start off by working on is building a level of consistency, right? So it only makes sense. So if we kind of dive into what strategy I would go back to, if I could only pick and use one, and it would be simply day trading short-term change in trends using a 20 period moving average, which is your 20 SMA, and also correlating that with a 200 on your chart. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of walk you through this system. I'm gonna walk you through the rules and I'm gonna walk you through kind of how you would do this on a day in and day out basis. Every single day, you're gonna get at least one, two, three different setups. Every single day, you should have a winning trade in there. Every single day, you might break even on a trade. Every single day, you might have a loser. But the name of the game is being consistent and the name of the game is playing out the numbers and using probabilities to your advantage, just like a Las Vegas casino. A Las Vegas casino knows that someone's going to come up to the table, to the roulette table. Let's say they put two, three hundred dollars down. You know, one time they're putting a hundred dollars on black. The next time they're putting a hundred dollars on red. Sometimes they're spreading the board playing some numbers, betting on green and black. The house knows that once in this particular example, a gambler starts getting off of their game plan, starts rotating around with different bets. That's where the edge of the casino comes into play. So think about the stock market the same way. We want to be the house. We want to have the edge. So our edge is going to be following the same setups, taking the same entries, using the same stop losses, and having the discipline each and every single day. You're gonna also understand that you will lose trades. You're gonna also understand that those one, two, three trades that you lose, whether they be in a row, whether they be spread out, are not going to be the death of your account. It doesn't mean that you need to flip flop and change strategies. It doesn't mean that you need to put on more risk. It doesn't mean none of that. What it means is that you need to keep working through and taking trades. And what I like to tell a lot of my newer traders is run a series of 20 trades. We're looking for the same chart pattern, the same setup. We're going to use the same stop loss and we're going to just run through the series of taking 20 trades. What we really want to do is discipline and condition our brains to accept losing as part of the business and also to build a mindset and discipline of consistency that is going to allow us not to have FOMO. 
that is going to allow us to have confidence to take the trades when we see them after coming off of a losing trade. A lot of times newer traders will stop trading or be very hesitant because they took a loss or because they let the loss get too big. And now they're trying to cherry pick the best possible scenario and best possible setup and trade because they're so in fear of losing. But what you need to understand is that losing is a part of this game and the faster you can get okay with losing and the faster you can get okay with becoming a losing trader, the faster you're going to be on the road to consistent profits in a much more cleaner state of mind, okay? So this is exactly how this strategy is gonna work. What we're going to do is look for setups where we are trading over or underneath the 20 period moving average. In this particular scenario here at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, you can see us close below the 20 period moving average. Now, all we are going to do is set a one bar stop, okay? All we are going to do is give this the title of our reason why candle, okay? The level at the bottom is going to become your pivot. So we're quickly going to make, give this the title of a pivot, okay? Now what we are looking for is a confirmation of our pivot and this becomes our entry, okay? So three steps and let's kind of take this off the screen. We need a reason why candle, we need a pivot and we need a confirmation of that reason why candles pivot. Now we are going to throw our money into that confirmation candle, okay? So our stop loss is going to be a one bar stop each and every single time. In this particular case on today, which is July the 20th, this is currently after the market has closed. If we just would have followed this one particular strategy, essentially your entry price would have been at a price of around 15,815 and we ended the day at 15,546. This is a 300 point move that someone could have taken advantage of in one particular day. A 300 point move in the NASDAQ futures could essentially be your trade for the week. It could essentially set your PL up for the next two weeks. It could essentially set your PL up for the month, depending on what your position size is. Now, again, if I could restart this, I would definitely use a prop firm. I would definitely trade micros. I would definitely trade one strategy. I would definitely try to be consistent with my entries and my exits. Now let's get a little bit more in depth with this particular strategy. Not everyone's gonna catch the entire 300 points. And I don't want to throw this video out here that, you know, <clears throat> to get people to think that if you were to take this trade, you were gonna make 300 points, more than likely maybe you would've made 30 or 40, maybe 50. Maybe if you're lucky, you, sque you squeezed 100 points off of this trade, but what I want to say is give you guys the idea of the potential behind it, okay? So we had multiple setups that happened today. So this would have been our first setup. This was setup number one. This setup was a winner, okay? So you can see that we drop down here, then we start to bounce. As we start to bounce here, we do get a setup that closes over the 20 period moving average, quickly confirms, chops around, and then gets rejected. I want to highlight something to you guys as to why we are not going to sit and take every single setup that comes because there's going to be rules, right? We're going to have a trading plan. The whole idea of having a trading plan is giving ourselves an edge and that edge is going to allow us to be consistent and make money time over time. So one of the rules that we're going to have in this trading plan is that if the day's trend is down and we are trading below the 200 period moving average, the 200 SMA, we are going to ignore every single long setup. So we're going to ignore this one, we're going to ignore this one. And all we are going to focus on is taking the next short setup, okay? So the next short setup is going to come at a, at a time of 9.15 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And the confirmation on that was going to come at 9.20. 
the price that you would have been looking to enter short was going to be 15,742. And in a matter of just 15 minutes, if you wanted to scalp this, goes from a price of 15,742 down to a price of 15,686. So in this matter of 15 minutes, we are talking about getting over 20, 30, 40 points. This little trade here could have essentially allowed you to turn your computer screen off and stop your workday very, very happy. Now, if you took some profits, let's say you're holding a runner. Again, we're using that one bar stop. As long as we don't take out our stop, we're gonna remain in the trade. If you would like to tighten up the risk on your runners, you would use a close over the 20 period moving average, and this would become your out. But as long as we do not close back over the 20 SMA in this particular situation, we're gonna to continue to ride it to a new low of day. When we get the new low of day put in here, whether it was here, here, or here, you could definitely start to sell and take some of those profits. So now you can see how we can start extending some of these wins that essentially start off as scalps, but because we have a plan, because we have an edge, because we have risk management, we're going to allow the trades to work out and capture more bank flow, okay? Cash flow, money, whatever you wanna call it, right? A bag, whatever you wanna call it. And essentially this trade here never closed back over the 20 period moving average either. And it gave you from an entry of 15,746 to the lows of 15,546, it gave you a 200 point decline. So even if you took half size off and you held half size for runners, you could have essentially captured over 50, 100, 200 points. So if I was gonna go back in time, I would build my trading plan around this one particular strategy. And just again, to kind of outline how it works, we are looking for short-term change in trends over or under the 20 SMA. We need three things to happen. We need a reason why candle. That is when the candle closes above or below the 20 period moving average. We need what is called a pivot. A pivot point is going to be the high wick or the low wick, depending on if we're playing long or short. And then we need number three, the most important part, the confirmation candle, which is gonna come on the next candle after our reason why candle. That is the candle we're throwing our money into. We're using a one bar stop over or under our reason why candle. We're going to allow the trade to work or we're going to get stopped out. There is no in-betweens. Follow the system, quit trying to guess where the market's going. So many times I see traders look at this down move, it starts to bounce, they try to go long, they don't wanna continue the move short because they feel <coughs> we're oversold, they wanna catch the bottom, they're trying to catch the top. Just instead sit on your hands, be an adult, be a disciplined trader, have a set of rules, allow your thinking in, 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 in logical part of the brain to kind of take over the emotional part of your brain. Again, do we want to lose trades? No. What happens when you get into a trade like this or you get into a trade like this and automatically it starts bouncing against you. The emotional side of the brain kicks in, you start to panic, maybe you sell, maybe you double down on size, maybe you just get out of the trade altogether only to see the trade continue to work in your favor. Next thing you know, you're trying to reshort here, it's starting to bounce, you sell out of that position, try a short position again, it bounces some more, you get out of that position, and now you are what's called in the trading community, in the trading world, in the trading business space, going on full tilt because you're not allowing the logical and thinking portion of your brain to work properly. You've allowed the emotional part of your brain to take control. And it's the emotional side of your brain is actually what causes you in the physical form to react and make decisions, okay? So again, 
It's easy to sit here now and tell yourself, well, this trade looks pretty good here short. This trade looks pretty good here short. If it did this, I'll go ahead and get out. I will tell everyone this right now. When the market is live and you have no idea that the, the, the chart was going to do this, the emotional side of your brain really starts to kick in and starts to kind of weigh you down. So as a trader, even more importantly than learning strategies, even more importantly than you know what broker you're using or what indicator are you using, none of that stuff matters at the end of the day. What matters is can you control and work side by side? Can your logical thinking part, portion of your brain coexist with the emotional part of your brain? If you cannot coexist together in the same headspace, you will constantly be spinning your wheels in the mud and what it takes for a lot of traders is to blow up multiple accounts time and time again until finally there's a flip that gets switched you're tired of losing and you're tired of consistently doing things that are causing you to lose money or you quit and you are out of this business 100 percent how many people do you know that have been in this business maybe you've seen them on social media on youtube maybe personal family friends that maybe at one point in time were dabbling in the markets wanting to learn how to trade and next thing you know they're here one day and they're gone tomorrow those people don't actually truly understand what it takes to to survive in this business if you talk to any trader who's been doing this and who's experienced again myself i've only been doing this for about eight to eight and a half years i personally know and talk to traders who have been in this business for 20 25 30 plus years in the market it's not about the end game there is no end you will never figure out the markets completely what this business is about is about survival and protection of your capital not only your physical hard-earned dollars capital but your mental capital as well it's about surviving into the next trade. It's about surviving into the next day. It's about surviving to the next quarter, to the next year, to the next decade. We want to be in business for the next 10 years. We are not trying to retire in six months. Many traders who come in here and see the big flashy gains and they see everyone driving Lamborghinis and everyone living this lavish lifestyle want this fictitious kind of outcome like this when in fact it's not about that that what what it's really about is being able to survive and having the skill set to where you can work from anywhere to where you can generate the income that you want to generate where you can have the freedom of time that you want to have so until you start working on your strategy until you start working on yourself as a trader until you start understanding that you have two portions of your brain that are being activated during the trading session that's the emotional side of your brain and you have the logical and thinking side of your brain but you have to understand that the emotional side of your brain and i know i keep stressing this but it's very very true and if it wasn't true and it didn't make sense and there was no truth to any of this trading psychology type stuff then everyone who walks into the markets would be a multi-millionaire everyone who walks into the markets would be retired in a year everyone who walks into the markets would know when stocks are going up and when they're going down the harsh reality of it of it, of it all is that 90% of traders do fail. There's about 20% of traders who are kind of just break even scratch traders. Maybe they, they go on a run for a few months, they make some money, they take some withdrawals, and then they kind of really don't do anything else. And then there's a very select few 10%, 15%, maybe 5%, maybe the numbers have grown, that actually do this and can do it consistently over time, over time. It's not about one trade. Anybody can win one trade. I can pull anyone off the street and say, can you just buy long here and, and short stock here and hold it for a week? 50% of those people are gonna make money. 50% of those people are going to lose money. But the thing is, can you do that over the next six months? Can you do that over the next 12 months? Can you do that over the next 10 years? And the majority of people cannot. 
So if I was gonna go back in time and learn one strategy, I wouldn't waste my time trying to learn so many different chart patterns and so many different indicators and so many different, you know, all this terminology out there. The first thing that I would work on would be myself. How do I react when I'm in a trade? What are my feelings when I'm in a trade? And can I execute when I'm supposed to execute? Because the thinking portion of my brain is going to tell me that I should be getting out of this trade because technically I am stopped out, but the emotional part of the brain doesn't want to let you lose. The emotional part of the brain wants to keep you in the game. It's all about the hunt. It's all about the fight. You're not a loser. You've been spending a lot of time on these charts. You understand come on, keep pushing, keep pushing, double down. So once you start to get, let, let that side of the brain take over, you then go on tilt and it becomes an everlasting cycle. So the first things that I would learn before one particular strategy would be, how do I feel as a trader? How do I manage my trades? How do I react when I'm in here playing with live money? And regardless if it's live money or it's prop firm money, or it's trading demo paper funny money, how do you feel when you're in these trades and can you do what you know you're supposed to be doing? And then on top of it, I would just use this one strategy. You can literally get by and make a living 150, 200, $250, $300 a day with this one particular strategy with very, very low risk, trading micro contracts, using prop firm capital, and building a cushion to kind of pull that money from these prop firms, put it into a personal account, and now start growing your bottom line. So again, 20 SMA, 200 SMA. We're looking for the change in trends below or over the 20 SMA. We are ignoring trade setups to the long side when we're underneath the 20 S or the 200 SMA, and we are ignoring the short setups when we are trading over the 200 SMA. Stick to the day's trend. It will save your ass more than it will not. And also have good discipline. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment, like, subscribe. Let me know you guys made it all the way to the end of this video. If you guys wanna trade with me, you guys wanna learn more, first link down in the description box below. You're gonna get access to everything. I'll let you guys all go and have a blessed day. Make sure you guys, um, communicate with me once you guys do come into the room at Evolution Traders so I can uh, get you guys all set up and dialed in and I'll catch you guys all in the next video.